Welcome to the Jenkins Infra Team meeting. It's the 2nd of December, 2021. Um, so we excuse Damien DePorto, he's stuck in traffic at the moment. Uh, I think we've got uh, several topics. Let's go through them and uh, talk to them briefly. So we've got, as attendees, we've definitely got Hervé, me, and Tim. And I'm hoping Damien will join us. So we'll leave him tentatively there. So in terms of topics, um, previous weekly fa build failure, apt-get apt -get upgrade campaign, outages, Kubernetes 1.20, TLS certificate for repo, Oracle Cloud Access, Terraform, COS, update CLI, Domain renewal, fastly. Wow, we've got lots of topics. Any, oh, and I've got one more topic to add. Oh, no, here it is. It's already here. Okay. So it was a new test new solutions topic. Any other topics than what are listed here that you need to put on the list? I think we're going to run out of time long before we run out of topics. Maybe uh, the arrival of Stefan next week. I don't know. Oh, oh yes. A new okay, we'll have a new team member joining. That's good, right? So. Um, so that's an announcement thing. Yes, I slept. New team member, new team member joining at Cloudbees on infrastructure. Stefan, and we'll introduce yeah. him at next week's meeting. Great, thank you. Okay, good. Any other? things that go not need to go onto the agenda. Not I um, I think it will are good. Okay. All right. So so in terms of previous weekly failure, uh, I the background on that this is is was this the weekly build? So I assume it was the weekly Jenkins build. Um I'm sorry uh, I don't know I don't know um uh, wasn't uh I assume it was, was last tuesday with a whole bunch of packages disappeared when no one still oh. recommends was removed right no one still recommends was added which broke a whole bunch of stuff got it right okay so this one was this was we had a build failure on 2.322 it was repaired by active work that day but Got it. That makes that one clear. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. So that's more, more a status. We think it's healthy. Uh, the next topic then was this apt get upgrade campaign. And here it is. Um, what, what I think this is really saying is we've got a number of machines that are not running the most recent patches. And, and systematically, we need to get them up to it. So one example is instances that wouldn't reboot. Another that we don't have access to, that others on the team don't have access to, that it's only Olivier and me. Another that has had, had to receive major rework. Damien, you're here, great. So we can, let you, we can switch to have you running instead of me. Good, sorry. Um, okay. So you were describing the issues on the Apt get right. upgrade campaign, right? Yep. Uh, so we uh, it was uh, it was successful. The goal was to check uh, as much machines as possible and have uh, a turnover. Some issue. So we had some issues on machines, direct issues like the machine not rebooting. Um, so we had an issue that has had impact on the weekly release where PKG was in a, had a lot of held broken packages. And so Mark and I debugged that. In fact, the package were not installed correctly because it was a mix of Xenial and Bionic sources, even for the core packages. And most of the packages were from an initial Ubuntu non-server image. So a bunch of X11 running, X11 running. Um, yeah, so we had to clean. 
Um, Mark, while you're there, or maybe team, I'm not sure what is the service census. I haven't searched, but if you have access to the VM, because I see the VM running on AWS, but I, I'm not allowed to connect to it. And there are references on Jenkins Infra. So if one of, one of you know what it is. Which VM? Census, C-E-N-S-U-S. And I thought it was used for, for um, survey results for who's, do, who's using it, how. Uh, Mark, I don't have access either, so. Okay, so we have to ask uh, Olivier or Tyler. Gotcha. I assume, Tim, you also probably can't SSH to census.jenkins.io? Is that, is that just census.jenkins.io? Let me try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Oh, you are? Okay. Yes. Yep, I've got root access. Oh, very okay. good. Okay. So after the meeting, uh, I might need your help at least to ensure that uh, we copy at least the public key of uh, me, Mark, and Hervé. And then we'll check uh, Poupette and stuff afterwards, if it's OK. Is it just your GitHub one, or is it different? Uh, it's a different one. OK. Uh, use the same as uh, CI Jenkins or whatever the machine you, you would have access to. Okay. Uh, I, I will send you a public key, and I will take care of that after the meeting, if it's OK for you. Yeah. So you won't waste your time searching for the correct key. Great, thank you. Excellent, great, Tim. Glad that you've got access. Um, another impact that happened yesterday is that the machine usage.jenkins.io, which is hosted on AWS, um, there were an old issue that I've mentioned on the notes, uh, 1563. Uh, so in fact, there is a, a that one of the data volumes mounted to survey bigger usage wasn't remounted after the reboot because it was not written on FS tab. So it's an old issue. Uh, so I took care of that. And Andrew opened a new issue with the issue and we took care. Uh, it's a kind of temporary situation because we, are, we plan to move that virtual machine to Azure or even better to Kubernetes. So uh, we keep that uh, intermediate state where one volume is managed by Puppet and the other has been managed manually, but is persisted. That's one line of FS tab. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's all. So we will have some work to do in the future to, to ensure that this campaign of APK uh, upgrade are not exceptional. I would say we should have a weekly at least upgrade and reboot on all the virtual machines uh, because a bunch of issues are cooked and it's better if we control when we could have the issue. So that's something we could plan for the short term future. Uh, we could use a, what's the name, an attempted upgrade on Ubuntu that will take care of rebooting the machines and having a reboot weekly, uh, that could be a good thing. We can have uh, some machine Monday, so um, some of the machine Thursday. Um, the reboot is to uh, ensure that the kernel upgrade are applied, even though there are methodology on Ubuntu to have live reload kernel without reboot. However, the reboot also have a second effect. We change hypervisor a bit more often on the cloud provider, which ensure that we have a recent hardware or at least hardware that is not uh, uh, heavily used, at least for the M instance on AWS. Is there any question, things unclear on that part? That sounds positive to me. Okay. Um, a point on the recent outages. So Jenkins IO postmortem uh, uh, has been published last week, right after the team weekly. So it's going to be frozen. I haven't seen any comments here and neither did I receive any feedback. So, so for, yep. Yes, sorry, go would ahead. You, I apologize, Damien. Mm -hmm. I did not do anything with this. Could you, would you be willing to leave it open for yeah. another day or two to allow further more time? Yeah, I got, I'm gonna wait uh, to tomorrow end of day. Is that uh, sounds good that for you? That is sufficient. Yeah, that would be sufficient. Cool. Um, there has been an issue on archive um, Monday, so Erv and I have to write a postmortem for that one. 
so it was a consequence of the apt-get upgrade that upgraded the kernel and some uh, low-level modules that Apache relied on for the bandwidth limitation. So it sounds like that the bandwidth was not working with all the kernel, and it started working, <laughs> which was the outage. So we were uh, way past the bandwidth, and the calculation for the bandwidth was done for rack space, which is not an issue on Oracle right now for that machine. So we removed that after confirmation by Olivier that it makes no sense anymore. Worst case, if we had all the bandwidth of all the infrastructure on all the provider we have, the worst case will be 10 bucks per month on Oracle. That means two petabytes per month. Great. So I mean, okay. Uh, yes, so post-mortem, um, Hervé and I were involved uh, on that one. So that's also a good thing. That means that we are uh, trying more and more to work together and not alone. Great. Kubernetes 1.20 upgrade, Hervé, mic is yours. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, it went well. We had uh, to, for the EKS uh, CI um, cluster, we had to, to add, um, add, add on uh, in Terraform so we could uh, manage them. Uh, it was um, uh, um, the CENI, I don't, I don't have them. I'm just uh, sorry. Um, it was a core DNS network CNI driver to allow pods to be on uh, private networks on AWS. And the third one was cube. I don't remember. So these add ons are. Um, components installed in Kubernetes that we could install as Elm chart or whatever, uh, but that are managed by EKS and Terraform because they are the bare minimum to be sure that we can start using Kubernetes for real. So core DNS is, the, is an example. The DNS implementation depends on the Kubernetes distribution that you have. So most of the time that installation is managed by the cloud provider. That's the goal of these add-ons. And we were not aware of that existence because they were installed one shot and not managed automatically during uh, the EKS installation. We... I think that's all. That was quite a success. So great job, Hervé, because that, that went very well. Uh, the preparation and the communication were really good, better than Olivier or mine. So congrats on that also. That's a good thing for our end users. Um, and for the next one, so you will be the master of the timeline again. Uh, and we will have to improve a bit, to work a bit more on Terraform. But now we have proved that you have the ability to pull requests and change elements if needed on Terraform. So you should be autonomous and I can be there either pairing with you or as a backup, or you can do it alone, your choice. I will probably uh, will do it uh, with uh, Stefan. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, just one thing, Mark, you and I, we should contact KK to see if he's able to renew the certificate for repo jenkinsci.org. I don't know if he acted with GFrog or not. Um, if he don't have time or if he's uh, busy, we can totally take over, but we have to contact him for that. OK. Uh, so GFrog is ready. Uh, the ball is on Kiki. He has to send uh, the certificate to GFrog so they can act directly. They are waiting for him. OK, great. Uh, at least on the information we had and we were in CC. Maybe it has changed, but we have to check with him. That, so would you be willing to check with him? I'm happy to do it. Yep. But yep. Great. Okay. Uh, I'll take care of that then. Um, Oracle Cloud, we need uh, access. I haven't put your name, Tim, because I was sure that you have access on the Oracle Cloud console. I don't, Did, but I should do. Yep. 
and I propose uh, Gavin at the same time as well, if it's okay for everyone here. Yes, that makes sense. I posted a link into the IRC about integrating it with the Azure ID. What do you think about that rather than oh, yeah. man manually doing it for everyone? That could be interesting. Does it work for all the cloud system we plan to use? Should do. I mean, it works. It works with AWS. Um, oh, the, at least that's that should that so, uh, be good enough. Yeah. I don't know how we would do that, but it sounds great. Uh, Tim, would you be willing to work with me on it? I think um, Olivier yeah. and I are the ones who have access to it currently. It's it's too much of a one-off right now. Integrating with Azure AD feels like a big win to not not have it be such a one-off. Yeah. Thanks, Tim, for pointing that one. I didn't know it was possible. That's really good. Um, yep. So short term, we need access to the Oracle Cloud right now and integrating with Azure AD to, to make it our life easier in the future. Great, thanks. Yeah, and Tim, is it best if I just, I'll send you a proposal sometime we sit together and have you coach me through the whole, what do we need to do? It's up to you. I mean, there's a end-to-end -end guide, but I can sit there with you if you want. Okay. It's probably a, it's probably a template application already in Azure AD. It's normally pretty straightforward, but yeah, happy to do it with you. It, it would, it would be a great help for me just because of my, my, lack of expertise in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, a word about Terraform for more clouds. So work in progress. Uh, there is an, a new epic uh, created as an umbrella to follow up the, um, the short-term uh, Terraform related tasks. Uh, there is one task in progress, which is blocking for all the other. That's the pipeline library. And for the rest, we, we will be able to parallelize the tasks depending on the, who is willing to take which one. Great. Um, a word about the costs as well. Uh, we were able to decrease the cost of AWS under 9K. It was 15K last week. So that's really good. Um, I hope we could gain uh, way more by moving some virtual machines. Uh, almost there. And the cost on Azure also are way lower than 10K. So congratulations on the effort of everyone. There are still some uh, improvement that we can do on the cost, but that's already a lot. We decreased, uh, we cost twice less than what we did at uh, the beginning of the year. So that's really good improvement. Congratulations, Damien. Congratulations. Hervé, that's great. Thank you. Um, a word on the update CLI campaign, unless you have question about Terraform update or the cost. OK, so uh, Hervé continued the, the big effort about trying to put update CLI on a lot of repository. Most of the time, we only track one or two elements on our repositories. And so the idea was to track as much as possible. So we have way more updates that we control. So there are still two repository upcoming on the Docker images. And we will have the Terraform um, uh, repositories to add, but that's part of the blocking task I mentioned earlier. So that's really nice. Um, I expect that we should be able in a, few, in a few weeks to start contributing to Jenkins CI repositories with update CLI proposal like Tim did for the BOM. I'm sure there are a bunch of elements that we can, uh, what we've learned on Jenkins Infra could, be, could help the community. Uh, IO domain renewal. Thanks for the pointer folks for that one. Um, that means we should start renewal before end of year, if I understand correctly. Yeah, for now the, the renewal price uh, hasn't increased, but uh, I don't know where uh, the domain is registered. What is the <laughs> registrar for Jenkins.io? I don't know. I don't know either. I, and I would have to double check. Tyler. Go ahead. 
Tyler, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Tyler, I think Tyler Croy had it. Um, and, and the one that the one that is expiring soon is JenkinsCI.org. Um, the Jenkins.io doesn't actually expire for 420 days. So we have over a year till it expires. But if if the registrar allowed to renew uh, several yeah. years in advance, it could be uh, smaller Wait, I mean, uh, safe. Right. Yeah, because uh, the direction it's taking with the private uh, company behind, yeah, the price will, will be... increase. That will be scan completely scandalous. Okay, good. So, um, so that's once we need to get an action item. Someone who will check with Tyler Croy, uh, likely through Tyler Croy. Mm -hmm. uh, Hervé, are you okay to take that action and drive it? I will be there to yeah. put you in contact with Tyler if it's okay for you. Unless um, Mark or Tim no, want okay. to take over on that one. Oh, that would be great. I, I would love to not take over on that one. I had had this conversation last year with Tyler about JenkinsCI.org and it auto renewed. So he just left it to do what it did. But in this case, if you perceive that there's a cost savings by changing our renewal pattern, certainly mm -hmm. nine more years of Jenkins.io is a predictable thing we want, right? We, we don't want to lose the Jenkins.io domain. That yeah. will be also interesting to have Tyler uh, feedbacks on that part might be valuable as well. Yeah, like it's probably not a huge increase. Like it's going okay, from 42 to 55. But yeah, if, if, if that's the increase, if that's the only yeah. increase, I would just ignore it uh, in terms of, but my worry was, I think it's worth a conversation with Tyler to see if he wants to extend us to many years so that we... We, so we don't have to pay the renewal every year. Yep. Mm. Worst case, we will learn something about how it works. So right. it won't be a waste of time. Okay. Um, Gavin asked about Fastly as code. So because right now the Fastly configuration for the domains are managed by the Fastly UI. That means you need access, etc. And there are a bunch of ways to configure it remotely. Uh, here we've put an example of Terraform since this is our trend. Uh, you can do this with other way, but that will that will be interesting because that could mean um, maybe less management to access, and we could uh, propose changes, review them, or at least being able to roll back uh, with shared knowledge. So honestly, I think that's a good idea, but there might be downside. I don't know which one right now. I'm not sure in terms of security. If there are sensitive elements on this configuration, I don't think there's anything sensitive. I don't think so, yeah, either. So that could be interesting to to share that. Uh, so thanks, Gavin. That will be an item to take. Um, it's uh, my proposal. My proposal, if there are no voice against that, uh, will take care of uh, adding an issue to the Terraform umbrella unless someone wants to manage it with another tool, which I don't, honestly, I don't mind. But if you want another tool, you do it and you own it. And I will ask if Gavin is interested. Anyone interested on working on that one? Happy to let you work that one. Cool. Um, Mark, about the solution you asked, so uh, the... Yeah, the email I, thread. Yep. I'd say let's just continue the discussion in the thread. I don't think we need to discuss mm -hmm. it here. I'd like time in this meeting for a presentation by Gradle Enterprise and probably a presentation by Launchable. Um, but it, this will wait till next week for the further discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal to mention it is to acknowledge that we saw your message. And that's, oh, great. Uh, using integrating Gradle and Launchable as new services on the infrastructure could be worth it for the contributor developers of Jenkins. We have to evaluate, let's say, the overall cost in terms of time and techniques. Right. Uh, but yeah, there is no strong note that could be a good idea for both. Okay. Please. 
Um, thanks, Tim, for reminding us about Carpenter that has been presented by uh, AWS. That's also something to check if it could be valuable to, to improve the auto-scaling of the Kubernetes cluster. It's not Amazon only. Um, so we have Carpenter and Universal Cube from Scaleway. These are two tools that are working at different level of the Kubernetes stack that are uh, prov Kubernetes provider uh, agnostic. So there are a bunch of interesting things to manage, uh, to help us managing. Uh, Scaleway, Scaleway. Oh, Scaleway. For okay. Scaleway, it's a uh, one control plane replicated on different cloud provider. And you can use worker pool on wherever you want. Um, and Carpenter is an auto-scaling solution for worker uh, to have different kinds of workers as well. So that might be almost the same feature area. Mm. Okay. And that's all, unless you have other topics, questions? None from me. Cool. Um, I'll take care of publishing on the GitHub repository. And, and if it's okay for everyone, I will also publish these notes on this course on the community as well. That might be a link to the published notes. So the link will be a permalink on GitHub. Great. That's a new thing. And if you'll wait till after I get the meeting recording published, mm -hmm. then, then we get the benefit of embedding the meeting recording as a, a clickable link. Thanks. Yep. Good idea. Excellent. That's all. all There's right. something else? Thanks everyone for your involvement and your efforts. Thanks. Take care.